insyaAllah uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Alhamdulillah uh, Kita diberi peluang untuk uh, online uh, Hari ini dalam keadaan Mungkin uh, dekat rumah orang lain Tak tahu lah rumah saya <laughs> Walaupun even weekend kan Kita banyak urusan Urusan sebagai ibu bapa Atau mungkin yang yang mana bu, Mungkin ada yang bujang juga yang dengar Sebab persediaan kan okay. So ada yang uh, busy dengan lab Or busy dengan kerja kan santai-santai dengar. So uh, insyaAllah kita mulakan dulu dengan uh, Al-Fatihah. Okay. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, hari ni uh, macam biasa ini uh, kita kita bersiaran lagi dalam rancangan uh, Sensei ni Kiko. So Sensei ni Kiko ni dah uh, rancangan yang cepat lah untuk, untuk talk kali ni. So uh, uh, apa tu Sensei ni Kiko? So Sensei ni kalau dalam bahasa Jepun um, uh, teacher lah kan dulu. And Kiko ni dengar. So kita uh, rancangan ni adalah rancangan uh, macam Uh, slot ah slot rancangan macam TV tu kan. Rancangan ni adalah rancangan uh, slot untuk kita bertanya kepada yang uh, yang ada ilmu kan ber, ber, berkenaan beberapa perkara yang terutamanya yang berkaitan dengan uh, parenting. So parent uh, tajuk kali ini ialah parenting for success how to remain happy and healthy in competitive world. Dan dibawa khas oleh Iman Jepun satu uh, organisasi uh, <coughs> di bawah khas oleh Iman Jepun uh, satu yang nama panjang dia ialah Ikram Muda Antarabangsa Jepun sebuah organisasi dakwah kebajikan dan tarbiyah yang komited untuk membangunkan potensi masyarakat di Jepun amnya um, dan uh, khususnya rakyat Malaysia dengan pendekatan Islam rahmah. Okey so um, parenting for success how to remain happy and healthy in competitive world Uh, saya percaya sebagai ibu bapa kita kita ada banyak momen-momen yang um, kita kita sedih, kita kita kesal kan, kita kecewa, kita uh, berfikir uh, how could I uh, how could I uh, correct this, how could I do this better kan, macam mana kita nak buat uh, momen-momen yang kita kesali tu um, menjadi lebih baik. Tapi uh, ada satu quote saya dapat uh, daripada suami sendiri lah kan. Dia kata um, hidup kita ni bukanlah untuk menuju um, kesempurnaan. Kan? Uh, even um, kita sebagai seorang hamba Allah pun kita tak sempurna kan. Ada silap dan Allah sentiasa bagi rahmat Allah untuk menerima kita sebagai hambanya. Uh, dan kita setiap semua mohon rahmat Allah untuk menerima kita sebagai hambanya untuk masuk ke dalam syurga dia kan. So um, even dalam parenting ni pun dia tak ada kesempurnaan. Jadi apa apa lagi sebagai parent. So dia tak ada kesempurnaan. Uh, perfect parents. Dia tak ada perfect parents. Every parents ada kesilapan dia. Bukan kita je ada kesilapan kan. Maksudnya semua parents ada kesilapan dia. So how we want to live, uh, how remain happy and healthy kan. Dalam keadaan uh, dunia semasa ni yang ialah dengan media sosial semuanya. media sosial semuanya kan dengan uh, macam-macam kita rasa macam kita fail a, a fail parent a fail parent yang uh, susah nak 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 proceed kita kita, kita rasa kecewa dengan diri kan so insyaallah hari ini um, uh, puan Nur Ilham Anwar okey yang sekarang sedang berada di Jepun okey <laughs> okay. maybe ada yang rasa macam oh ni tak kita jemput from uh, apa ni Malaysia kan okey some some some, some tak kita jemput the pakar daripada Malaysia tapi Kali ni kita bawa orang uh, top speaker yang ada di Jepun sendiri uh, Puan Nur Ilham Anwar yang sekarang um, bekerja sebagai uh, Ex Center Director of Asian Learning So Puan Il... Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sekejap So uh, Puan Ilham Anwar ni dia uh, sedikit introduction lah untuk uh, memperkenalkan speaker kita pada kali ni dia uh, beliau pernah uh, mengikuti under 13 for BC teacher advisor di Vietnam, Brunei dan Malaysia uh, dari tahun 2010 sampai 2011 and then uh, merupakan uh, graduan 
uh, from Georgetown University USA uh, dalam Bachelor in Mathematics. And then, Allah, jangan berat berat eh. Okay, computer yang berat sekejap. Okay. And then, uh, meneruskan pengajian dia di King College London untuk uh, sambungan master in mathematics and education dan uh, mempunyai uh, pelbagai uh, experience lah sebagai pengajar di ELC International School dan uh, Asian Learning. So uh, sebagai sini instructor dan sekarang bekerja sebagai center director. Jadi insyaAllah uh, perkongsian kali ini beliau akan berkongsi sedikit sebanyak uh, ilmu beliau bagaimana untuk kita menjadi uh, uh, happy parents in this <laughs> Sekarang dunia sekarang, dunia sekarang lah yang kompetitif dan banyak cabaran ini. InsyaAllah saya uh, persilakan Puan Nuri Ilham Anwar untuk uh, untuk uh, mungkin nak sambung perkenalkan diri ataupun okay. <laughs> Thank you. Assalamualaikum everybody. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for making the time. Uh, tapi I nak take note, sorry salah satu lagi. I, I accent the director dah tak kerja. <laughs> oh, oh I, sorry, I sorry. Ah, uh, Sebab nak pindah pergi Jepun. Uh, so, we, tak apa, tak apa. Boleh aku oh. juga accent the director. Sebab so, <laughs> insyaAllah one day I can I can sambung balik kerja sana. <laughs> But thank you, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, Let me quickly share my screen. Uh, Contoh mati. Okay. Okay. Alright, so Assalamualaikum everybody. Thank you so much again for coming and um, apa saya rasa terharu dan sangat humble for making the time and trusting me to share whatever um, my knowledge uh, with everybody. Uh, so, uh, so yes, uh, talk today um, is basically uh, macam mana kita sebagai parents nak jadi supportive untuk anak-anak kita, kan? You know, the world uh, dengan teknologi, dengan all these entrepreneurs and businesses dengan children, it's very competitive. And baru-baru ni dengan COVID lagi, kita lagi stress, right? So that's not helpful for parents and kids. So macam mana we, we can help that and improve basically the relationship yang kita ada sebagai parents dengan anak-anak kita. So um, again, thank you so much, Sa, for the introduction about my background. And I nak disclose that I'm not an expert in terms of I'm not a child psychologist or anything. But Alhamdulillah, I will uh, share with you apa yang I belajar from knowledge sebagai center director dulu. Sebab I have done teacher training, I have done uh, parent training juga. So all this knowledge yang I do, um, insyaAllah, I hope to be beneficial for everybody. Um, and um, kalau ada apa-apa soalan, please feel free to tanya. You can type it on the chat and along the way, insyaAllah, I can try to answer. Um, at the same time, uh, I think soalan-soalan uh, yang kurang dah bagi before the meeting, uh, sorry, before the talk, uh, I've seen it, insyaAllah, we'll, we'll talk about it um, at the end. Yes. So, okay. Um, I I need to explain a little bit, bagi credit sikit pasal actual learning, sebab all this information I learned from actually even the slides. So, I will um, explain a little bit, like, who we are, uh, who's actual learning. So basically, the company I kerja dulu, Alhamdulillah, um, I kerja for eight years, enjoyed it very much, dapat belajar a lot of things, help a lot of students and even parents. So it started with uh, my, my former bosses, um, the CEO, um, they are uh, American, uh, Harvard graduate, right? Uh, both husband and wife. So uh, the husband dapat kerja kat Kazanah dulu and then came to Malaysia dengan the three children and one child is actually special needs. So masa dulu kat Malaysia ni, dia orang tengah macam struggle cari, you know, where is a good place to support the anak yang special needs tu. And at the same time, how to help the other children yang neurotypical, right? Um, just a bit of disclosure, if we have someone who special needs, uh, like autism or something, we don't call yang orang lain tu normal. It's, uh, wouldn't say not nice lah. So we say that they're neurotypical. The brain is a typical brain. Um, sorry, a bit sidetracked sikit. So, okay, so they cannot find someone yang suitable to support all kinds of children. That's why they don't buka Axiom Learning. So, the key thing pasal Axiom ni, they have to make sure that the children feel safe, right? When they come to Axiom, they are happy. And the most important thing is it's non-judgmental. 
uh, non-judgmental ni meaning we don't judge the students. No matter apa, buat perangai, macam mana, behavior, history, we don't judge them. Um, and I'll explain more after this. Yeah. So uh, the great thing is about Axiom is even though uh, every approach is individualized into a step unique uh, child, tapi they have developed an overall approach that will actually really help the kids with their learning and growth, um, not just for the kids, but also we teach the parents as well. And inshallah, I'm excited to share with all, uh, all of you today. Okay, uh, so before we start, um, I know, like you guys, uh, a bit of uh, assignment sikit, boleh tak? <laughs> so, um, before we start, think about a vision statement. So, I nak minta you guys to spend a few minutes. Um, I can explain more about this task um, to create a vision statement where you where you want for your child, right? And why 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 kita kena buat macam ni? Kenapa this is penting? Uh, to think about a general vision statement is about, you know, okay, as parents, of course, kita hope what uh, your child will be when they grow up, okay? What you hope for them, right? You want them to be successful, uh, um, can make friends, maybe in school and things like that, right? So we have all this worry and hopes, right? Coming in and out all the time. So oftentimes, it will become like something that will cause us stress and become anxious because we're, like, we're worried about our kids, can You know, when we're not around yeah, anymore in the future. So it, because of this worry, constant worry, we might put negative pressure on the children and that can influence their decisions right and we don't want that we don't want to influence their decision negatively so uh i will give you some time right now right to stop and think um of a vision that you have or some goals that you have for your kids right short-term goal long-term goal it's okay right depending what your kids needs are at the moment so um can uh you uh, try to make it as specific as possible Okay, um, something like graduating university. That's good, but it's a bit too general. So try to um, visualize. So, so cuba bayangkan, what does it look like, right? So macam mana anak tu tengah duduk? Buat, buat perangai macam mana, right? Macam mana nak pergi dari A ke B? So any goal, you can keep it yourself. You can type on the chat box. But let's start there before we move on. And... um. Three minutes, okay? I'll put on three minutes. I hope that's okay. And I'll just set the timer. Sekejap. Oh, ada timer. Um, okay, okay. Semua kena fikir ni. Tak, bukan tak sikit. Tiga minit, okay tak? <laughs> vision, vision. I create a vision. Uh, ni macam tengah tidur, kena kejut. <laughs> uh, sorry eh. Cikgu kan? <laughs> Background cikgu kena bagi staff sikit. Okay, starting, starting now. Lah, dalam bahasa Malaysia ni bis.
Okey. Kita dah ada few yang jawab. Yang lain, yang lain. Tengah lukis kat ni kot. Tengah lukis. Okay. Thank you everyone. Wow. Banyak eh. Suggestion oh. you guys have ni. Alhamdulillah. It, it, it looks like you guys are really thinking about the stage in future. And you know, you you already being normal parents worrying about the children. So very normal. And uh, mashallah, um, all the goals that you guys have semua. Uh, okay, Dima, you are uh, thinking what you hope for the kids in the future, insyaAllah. Okay, so have that in mind, right? Keep that uh, vision and goal in mind. So, but, uh, insyaAllah, after this talk, you have to go back to it. Even you nak tengok balik the baby statement and you, even your husband and your, uh, your wife, tengok balik and uh, flesh it out, right? Tengok what else are you to uh, dig down deeper to be more specific. And you know what? It's also easy to be done with your kids. Ilham, your voice seems to be far a bit lah. Jauh sikit. Jauh sikit pergi pun. Bluetooth je ni kot. Lari kot. Okay lah. Ah, okay. Ah, okay lah. Okay. okay, clear, clear. Very clear. Is it better? Okay. Ah, better. Okay. Sebab uh, pinjam husband punya Bluetooth uh, earphone. <laughs> Mungkin line size sikit. Is it better? Ah, uh, Yes, better. Ah, okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Sorry, line. Tinggal kecil sikit kot. Okay, so uh, sorry about that. Um, yes, so uh, you can even talk about it, you know, sit down with your child and talk about, okay, what are the goals between you and your child if you guys want to be on the same page, right? Really up to you. So let's get to business, all right? Basically, uh, the structure yang I can uh, cover uh, is basically I'll, I'll explain to you some rules and the tools, macam mana nak, nak implement these rules, right? So why why is it um, crucial with regards to like some things you have to think about and some approaches, right? With relationships, any relationship that you have, you have with your spouse, your anak-anak, kawan-kawan, one thing that is really important is communication, right? So it's not just about communication, but you have to be able to communicate effectively. And with children, it's not about, you know, you have to understand what I'm saying, but you also as parents could have faham what your children are trying to say, right? So we want to improve that communication because that is the key to any relationship, right? So inshallah, when you want to get to the effective communication, the key thing is trust. They have to be able to trust you and you pun kena be able to trust them. It's not about oh, mama ni tipu lah, janji kosong ke tak. Tapi sebab macam, trust that you believe me, that I'm a parent and I, I want the best for you, right? Tapi without being uh, the way you're going to paksa dorang ke, you're going to push dorang ke. So, I'll explain more a little bit, right? So, um, with these rules and tools, there are three rules I'll cover for today, inshallah. Um, and how to apply of each of the rules. And... I understand that based on the survey, um, kids are different ages. Great thing is, there's magic rules and tools you can use for kids at any age. Of course, the, the, the things that you say to them and the context are different. Tapi, tak kisah you ada teenage anak ke, you ada anak kecil ke. InsyaAllah, these rules should be able to be um, applied. Okay. Rule number one. This is something I myself um before before I was a parent I don't know I dah jadi parent dah masa kerja kat Axiom ni okay you really have to change your mindset and think if our kids can do better they would right you have to really percaya that if your child can actually do better they would right so you know no child wants to be called oh you're the lazy kid oh budak ni nakal lah you know, siapa nak, you know, be de label macam tu? Kita pun as adults, you don't want to be like, oh, you know, ah, ilham, you know, the lambat one, always lambat. Like, I don't want to be called that. Okay. So, but with these behaviors, the kids are being told over and over again. So, they ingat, that's the identity lah. They, be, they, they believe that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm so naughty, that's how I am. Right? Sepanjang I uh, kerja, sepanjang uh, mengajar ni, and even other children, I tak pernah jumpa a kid yang tak nak do well, right? They might portray they don't care, 
eh, mag-portray macam ah, tak kisahlah. You know, there's a fight. For them, because they want how much like, they have been beaten down by, like, you know, their, their surroundings, kan? People comment, Cikgu marah, right? Over and over again. Stress all the time. So at the end, they just shut down. They close off. So that's why they see that I don't care. So that's why parents, you need to believe, believe in your child. If it, they can do better, they would, right? They will do better, right? So this is the part that I mentioned before, pasal non-judgmental and acceptance. Kita terima anak kita seadanya, right? So here's the good news, right? Kita sebagai manusia, kita selalu cari kejayaan and we're, we're looking for happiness, right? So if your child can figure out, oh, this is how I become better in math. Of course, I want to be better in math. Siapa tak nak jadi uh, good in school, right? If your child can learn, oh, this is how I behave properly. Yes, they will behave properly if they can, if they're capable of doing that, right? So they just need to learn how to do it, right? And also figure it out on their own, right? Sometimes they tell the parents, duduk diam, duduk diam, diam, jangan bising, right? They're like, okay, I duduk diam, jangan bising. Tapi why? Why do I need to do it? Can be seen. So this is where we want to try to help them um, when I explain the tools. All right. So um, in that uh, bottom line of number one, our kids are different on different days. Because as adults, juga, we also have sometimes bad days. Kan? Kalau kita pergi, um, you know, keluar jalan somewhere and someone's rude to you, that totally spoils your day, right? Same as kids. You know, sometimes at school, something happened in school, cikgu marah ke, kawan macam, not really nice to them, that really affects them as well, right? And then when they come home, the mood changes. So this is where we, we have to think about the process and how to help the kids. And we want to build balik this relationship, all right? So um, Safina, you mentioned uh, in the introduction, right? As parents, we figure, oh, sometimes we have bad days. And we're like, how do I fix this, right? Is it damaged? Is it bad? Uh, you know, some. Sometimes you memang hilang sabar. Parents, I know, I know sometimes when I hilang sabar. <laughs> kat sini, maximum. Um, yes, and then you do blow up. You do lose your temper, right? And the thing is, it's okay because it's all about the repair, right? We can always repair our relationship with children. And parents, as well as you, if you can be better parents, you would, right? So this is a really good first step is that you not learn new things, you want to improve yourself as parents. So yeah, you already tried your best. Know that it's not your fault. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the tools. Okay. So how do we know, how do you want to show, not only believe that we accept our children, right? Right. So um, the first two I mentioned briefly, in the previous slide, right? Figure out what, what day your child died to, right? Could be like from school, you know, they had a bad day, kawan wasn't so nice to them, the teachers marah dorang ke, right? Um, or could be sometimes like sleep, tak cukup tidur, terlena lambat the night before, or maybe, um, you know, nightmare at night. So their opinion sleep is interrupted, so they're just tired, right? So that's why maybe that day was a bad day for them. Or some kids are more interpersonal. They want to share something, something that's bothering them. They want to talk about it. So before you do anything with them, when you notice the behavior, which I'm a bit off, try to find out, okay, maybe maybe something is up. Maybe today's an off day, right? So um, I can give an example. My second daughter, Rafa, five years old. Alhamdulillah, cheerful girl. Memang super hyper, cheerful, happy, happy. Tapi kalau tak cukup tidur, Oh, the littlest thing, like mama letak jam kat toast yang salah, right? No, no, hancur our morning too, right? So I think you like, okay, kenapa ni macam sensitive sangat? It's because she did not have uh, sleep the night before, tak cukup tidur. So things like that can affect your children, obviously. Even with parents, tapi with children, obviously, it's more, uh, they're more sensitive to these things, right? Rasa lapar ke, antuk ke. So, um, you figure out what's what are they how are they doing that day right and uh the second thing is when you want to show that you really accept the child you much cannot show and embrace them is one way is for this thing um i i just brief it to be effective communication so this is like um my magic wand that i kind of do with my kids right with communication 
research shows that okay, no matter how what age, apa apa sab sabu cakap, when you just repeat balik what they are trying to tell you in your own words, what you faham, you will gain so much trust. Okay, and this is actually something I do with parents when I talk to my clients, right? So let's say, okay, kenapa uh, I'll give Rafael example. Kenapa Rafael buat macam tu? Kenapa uh, you're mean to your brother? And she said, oh, sebab tu lah, Isa tolak I. And then I, I jatuh and then dia cakap I semua tu. And so I tolak dia balik, right? You might not agree what she did. Right? It's not okay to tolak. But even if you might not agree on what she did, you just repeat balik yang apa dia cakap. Oh, So, you cerita kat Mama yang Isa cakap you, lepas tu you tolak dia balik. Ha? So, the fact you you just repeat what she just said, she she be like, yeah, I mean, you you gain the trust. Kita sebagai adults pun sama, right? Kalau you cakap dengan kawan you, tak, tak, my husband I tu kan, you know, dia salah beli apa baju I, salah size. Right? And then you come like, oh my God, your husband beli salah size baju? And I'm like, yes, kan? So, you rasa macam, eh, hey, you're listening to me. I'm being supported. My uh, um, concerns and my anger is being validated. Kan? You tak shut me out. So, the fact that you are in open arms, you're like, oh, yes. You know, I'm listening to you. I'm here for you. You are open for them to believe you lagi. To feel that they have support. Siapa lagi nak support other than parents? So, you want to get your kid on your side by showing them that you are on their side. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Is, is it kind of acknowledgement? Exactly. Yeah. Acknowledgement, Some kind of acknowledgement. But you're not agreeing to the actions. You're just showing that you are listening or you understand what they are going through. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sapita. A uh, very good question. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, type it on the chat about the first tool and the first rule. I just covered. Oh, I just noticed that uh, someone said my voice is getting lower sometimes. It, oh, study or something. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to move on to rule number two. All right. So rule number two states that you have to tell your kids what you're noticing when you notice it. Right. So the thing is. You have to do it immediately, right? So behavior, any behavior, kita reinforce behavior too. If we call it immediately, when it happens immediately, we kita call it out, right? So unfortunately, most of the time with kids, kita buat with it bad behavior, right? Eh, jangan, jangan kak benda tu panas. Jangan tolak adik. Jangan lari, right? Immediately, we call it out when they're doing something wrong, right? So actually, in turn. Good behaviors pun kena buat at the same time, immediately, right? Because you get more for what you pay attention to. So we have to do that with good behavior themselves. So what you notice about the children, you have to say immediately uh, at that time about themselves, about what they're doing and about what uh, um, their environment. So why is it also good that you talk up about themselves, right? So you are helping them to be aware of, okay, myself, right? And if you notice good behavior, you are kind of actually build the positive self-knowledge, right? Their self-image, sorry. They develop positive self-image. So because then you think, oh, okay, there are some positive things that mama is noticing. Okay, right? So it increases the uh, confidence and they believe they have the power Oh, I have the power to be better, and with my actions, I can be. I can be better. I can grow positively. I can change positively, right? So this actually helps them with their positive self identity. All right. So what does it look like? What does it look like that you have to immediately tell your kids? It's all about pujian. Okay, when something someone does something good, of course you puji, right? All right, you do a good job. Now, uh, so this. Uh, Thing about praise is that uh, if you're not puji, you have to be very specific. Okay. Now the reason for that is you check out good job, well done. Oh, bagus, 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 right? It's nice. The kids are also oh, that's nice. Mama said good job, but it doesn't show what was exactly good. 
what, apa yang was good job with that, right? And why am I getting this attention and this pujian? So you have to be specific to know what, what exactly led me to, to give this, give it, be given this positive attention, okay? Um, and I also want to note that, okay, as a Malay, I grew up, if I go like you, I was told like a chick, I need sangat pandai. Right. Pandainya, oh, belajar matematik tinggi-tinggi, oh, boleh buat sains, fizik, chem, semua pandainya. Tapi you korang nak tahu tak sebenarnya? <laughs> Research shows that telling your child that your child is smart is actually not good for them. It's actually detrimental. Right? And I, all my life, I believe, oh, you must, you're in good maths, you must be very smart. Oh, right, pandai, pandai. You angkat, apa, you do something good, pandainya, pandainya. I'm sorry, people. It's not great news. <laughs> it's actually not good. Here's the reason, okay? So let's say if a child does better in a test, right? Dapat 90% from parents. Ah, 90%. Oh, pandai dia. Very good. So, so, so smart. You're so intelligent. You got 90% from maths. So they think, oh, I got 90% from maths is because I pandai. Not based on how much I study. Not how much I work hard because I pandai. So everybody, I tak pernah jumpa sesiapa yang have gone through life yang tak pernah rasa kesusahan, tak pernah been challenged, right? It might not be in primary school, they can sail through. It might not be secondary school, might not be SPM, tapi university, maybe, right? Even if they're after university, it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be um, in academics. It could be in when you find a job, when you try to learn at work, right? You will find the time where you will face challenges. That's life. So when you all this well, you were told that you were smart because you're doing things very well. And then you face a challenge and be like, eh, but my identity is smart because well, I can do things well. And I'm not doing this thing well. Am I not smart anymore? So they question their identity. That's, that's the reason. <laughs> so that's the reason that, that then they are there, this identity crisis, basically. So... That's why when you give praises, it has to be um, basically not based on intelligence or anything, but based on the effort. All right, so there are two types of praises that you can do for your children, right? So first is descriptive praise. You just describe describe what the child did, right? Uh, which is the data, apa yang you observe, and then your evaluation, apa, what you thought of it, right? So like, oh, um, you finished your homework. Great, right? What I mean, good job, good job. What was good job? You finish your homework, okay? Or like you get oh, kakak, kakak angkat pinggang masuk sink. Oh, bagusnya, well done, okay? Right. Specifically, why did the child give that um get that attention, right? And then you say well done. And the other uh praise, virtuous praise. So this one is you put a virtue or a a value, right? A nilai nilai murni yang you nak memupuk dalam anak-anak you okay so um uh, research shows that between descriptive praise and virtuous praise virtuous praise lagi effective it's about i mean it's more panjang but because you not um give a a value uh for that child so example is pasal homework tadi is oh you finish your homework and you didn't give up right you work through that question so hard it shows that you are a really hard worker so what is the value that you don't put is hardworking, right? You tunjuk apa you observe, siapkan homework, and you relate it with the virtue, right? And you got to, because I work hard, I sorry, because I did not give up in doing the homework, that means I'm a hard worker, right? So you say again and again that the child feel like, oh yeah, I did work hard on this. I am a hard worker, right? You are uh, reinforcing the good behavior. Um, and then the example is when you, you the your child was pinggang uh, dalam sing, right? Oh, kakak, kakak letak pinggang dalam sing. Oh, you know, kakak, you tahu mama letih, you know, kakak baik sangat. You were your apa, being very helpful, kakak and baik, jaga hati mama semua. So then you're putting, oh, baik, you know, being considerate, helping your mother, right? So be really, really specific. Memang panjang lebar nak explain sikit, I faham. Tapi... <laughs> The more uh, specific you are, then the child will understand, okay, if I do this, that means it's good, and then I get the attention. And know that parents, your kids will always want your attention, no matter what, right? 
And, you know, sometimes they, they do bad behavior because they get negative attention, it's still attention, right? So we want to switch that and give them the positive attention so they can do it more. So what's sad is that 90% of good behavior, people don't notice because it's, it's a norm, kan? normal. You are supposed to angkat pinggan, letak dalam sink, right? So if they don't be noticed too much, then they don't feel the value of it, right? Even in school, you're supposed to submit your homework, right? It's this, this normal thing. And you submit your homework, then, then you can then do it, you can do other things, what not, right? So, which leads me to the second point, is that the ratio is that you can check out 10 kali positive comments on your child versus one negative, right? Because we want to reinforce that of, um, positive behavior, all right? So let's think back, you know, um, mummies and maybe daddies and future mummies, inshallah, is that think about things maybe you can uh, say to your child, right? Any positive things you can say, kat rumah, ke kat luar rumah, right? Um, Right, thank you for putting the dishes in the sink. Or if they're in school, got sports, go, oh wow, you work really hard for football. So, abang lari, laju, daripada satu corner to other corner. Wow, well done. Right? Oh, baiknya kakak share iPad dengan adik. Uh, kakak memang sayang, tujuk sayang adik. Right? Things like that, you know, and with any behavior and any mindset to change inshallah if you do it consistently it will take up to six weeks for that thing to internalize tapi um, from my experience kerja dulu alhamdulillah with my previous students you will see changes even before the six weeks because the kids notice it quite very quickly so they often want to change that behavior so it can just remember in any habit it will take up up to six weeks so even parents kita kena biasakan diri up to six weeks tapi Kena lah, 10 times a day lah tu kena buat. <laughs> so, nak, nak bagi tak menutup sambil bercakap tu. <laughs> yes. You are going to start talking a bit weird. So I'm like, apa mama ni cakap apa? Lepas tu sing ni kan, tak pasal-pasal. So, but just keep on doing it. Mama kita malu sikit. Just talk, you know, you're talking something positive to your child. Just go on with it. Alright. And remember, if you terus cakap something negative, ganti balik dengan 10 positive. <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, I see that uh, ada uh, someone asked. Uh, macam mana nak ajar tentang limit untuk express kemarahan mudi merajuk sambil menjaga adab dari ibu bapa? Uh, the children, is it? Nak ajar kemarahan for the children? Mm -mm, uh, okay. Uh, so this uh, is a very good question. Thank you, Maswida. Um, so uh, nak tolong jaga mood semua tu sometimes it takes definitely takes practice but if you highlight that positive behavior when they manage to calm down you're like oh okay dah I calm down mama so happy you know you can come join us again and you, I'm, I, I want to spend time my time with you you really praise and make it a big deal when they start calm down and when they good behavior so uh but that's 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 one one way to do that and the other thing is sometimes when they want to throw tantra and marah tu, it's actually a form of communication. Something's not right with me. I'm trying to tell you something's not right, right? So um, I know I myself sometimes kena bagi time out for myself. Like I need time out from this. Kids will be perangai. Tapi actually when they are really throwing tantrum, they really want your presence. So you have to like really be there for them say yes i'm here for you can you please explain what you want yeah um and then if it's something that you don't think uh, uh what's that thing called protest if you you know sometimes maybe for example you got and they, they want something you got you got to cannot tak beli, right and they told the tantrum please stick to your decision you say no means no mama tak boleh beli bouncy ball too Mama says, no, you're not throw tantrum. You throw, you, you throw the tantrum. I'm here for you. Tapi, no means no. But nak kata, like, I'm hearing you. You want that ball. But I really cannot buy that ball for you. Yeah? You you can stay there and apa, be present for them. Yeah, the possible. I think um, yang mungkin dia macam, macam ni, um, memang kita nak, nak ni kan, tapi in the same time, macam mana kita nak 
uh, you tak sebenarnya kita ada perasaan experience pas macam yalah kita Melayu ni kan so macam eh tak boleh nak marah-marah eh tak boleh nak tengah-tengah suara eh <laughs> itu how to oh, play <laughs> Ya, yes. nak marah-marah lah tapi jangan nak tinggi-tinggi suara ah, macam tu. Ya, yes, so macam, macam, macam mana nak ajar tu. Kalau dia tinggikan suara, okay. So, tinggi suara tu memang like we have to say that the, the fact, I mean, for myself, not really, I don't know if it's the, the 100% answer but for myself, I nak cakap, that was really impolite. Macam you state it, macam state it where you are being impolite to mama or baba, you know, that's not okay. That's not okay. Dia kata, when you are when you are calm, when you are ready to talk to me politely, I'm here to listen. Right? So you are you are invite them that you are willing to listen, tapi dengan condition lah. You kena be polite. Right? But, you know, I mean, it's easier said than done. I, know, I pernah banyak kali be like, okay, can I, can I talk to mama? I don't want mama nak time out. Right? So <laughs> you have to leave the room. But sometimes, you know, when we lose our temper juga, we don't want to do that. But at the same time, you... You check out juga, whatever it is, like, you know, you terima your anak seadanya, you kata, yes, I'm here for you, I can listen to you. You have to be polite. Um, it takes definitely time and practice, right? Sometimes kalau anak tu buat perangai tantrum tu, um, you know, some kids are a bit different. So my daughter, my first daughter, sometimes they, she hasn't have to cry it out. Dia lepaskan frustration tu. Nak nangis dulu. Lepas dia dah calm down, okay. So it, it, it sometimes it depends on the situation juga and it depends on the kids because sometimes maybe they marah they they not they macam frustrated sangat it could be that they were having a bad day time to oh, lapar lah kau mengantuk lah kau but yeah I would say I I know it's not easy um just also bagi firm in a way where they can have control so uh like so example macam okay like main dengan uh, kawan or my cousin, and then they terpukul cousin to something like that. You know, and we, yelah, nak suruh cakap sorry, tak tak nak cakap sorry. Right, so maybe at that time, dia rasa dah malu dah, dah bersalah, tapi dia tak ready tak cakap sorry. So one day you kata, when you are ready to say sorry, you say sorry. Yeah. So maybe at that time tu memang, you know, that that, that time dia tengah so frustrated, right? So the more you force, tak bagus juga, because dia tak sincere cakap sorry, kan? So it really, really um, it depends on the situation. Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, okay. Um, next tool is that. Uh, next tool, sorry. Next rule. Next rule, okay. So show your kids what to do instead of telling them what they shouldn't do, all right? So this is basically kind of two things. You, what I wrote that is show your kids, not tell your kids, right? Show your kids what to do instead of then telling them what they shouldn't do. So one of that is that because you have to lead by example, okay? So kita anak-anak ni kita di observe all the time, right? You cannot tell them, eh, makan sayur, tapi bingan you tak makan sayur, tak nak makan sayur, okay? So things like that. So you have to lead by example. So why we are telling you that you cannot tell them shouldn't like don't 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 do something right because actually research shows that the kids when they're doing something they listen to instructions they drop the word don't no stop they drop it i don't know apa is it but then they just don't hear that part they just say when you say don't run stop running right the thing is if they're already running right you say don't run the image is that in my in their heads like I'm already running. You know, uh, what does that mean to do? I'm already running. I'm still running, lah, right? So that makes them being feeling difficult. Like what they should do instead. That don't run. But I'm already running. I can only run. I don't hear the don't. <laughs> run, run. So at the same time, what does it mean to not run? Does it mean do I say apa? Don't run. We can jump. We can uh, we can uh, apa? Spin. So what do we? They can also do right. So then, because they don't know what is appropriate, what, what does don't run me, right? They cannot visualize that. So how do we help them visualize it, right? Oh, sorry, I just want to add one thing as well, is about if you say things like, stop lying, right? Don't lie to me. When you kata kat don't, don't stop lying, then you, they are kind of realize, oh, am I, am I lying at the moment, right? 
then you can uh, have the risk of them making them think like I'm a liar, right? So you have to flip it to actually like show them what they should do. Okay, so you the way to support them is to help them build the picture in their head of what is the right thing to do, right? So the tools, right? Number one, knee, pick your battles. There's so many things we want to teach our kids, right? In one whole day, there's so many values and what's the right thing to do. Tapi kita kena prioritize what is the most crucial thing at that time, okay? So pick a few and then show it to your kids, right? So um, I let me get you guys again to participate, right? What could you say instead? Don't hit your sister, okay? Think about how do you say, don't hit your sister without using the word don't or stop or like no hitting, okay? No negative. How do you put it in positive? How do we, how do we want to show to our kids? Uh, I, if I should, should I put a timer on? <laughs> like one minute. Boleh cakap juga kan? Kalau ah, yeah. Boleh kan? cakap juga. Ada siapa-siapa nak try? Si. Biasa ni kot. Si. Tepuk sikit. <laughs> <laughs> boleh lah. Boleh lah. Boleh. Okay. It's okay. Let's. Let's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. Wow, guys. I'm very impressed. Mashallah, very, very good suggestions. Saya lah adik main-main sama-sama. Abang saya adik kan. Oh, Alhamdulillah. Be gentle. Yes, exactly. Show them how to love instead. Kiss your sister after all. So sweet. You guys, you guys are like amazing students. You know, look at you. Parents, look at this. Yeah, you're learning so well and you're like, you're already implementing it. Oh, bagus, bagus, bagus. Alhamdulillah. Right, great. Yeah, so those examples are great, right? Uh, tengoklah macam mana mama pass mainan ni to your sister. So nice. It. Kan kakak mesti happy kan? Kalau main baik-baik, nicely dengan adik. Right, right. You guys did it. You don't need my help. <laughs> okay. So Alhamdulillah, great. Good suggestions, right? Um, so basically, yes, you show them, you show them positively how to model to your kids, how to do things that they should do. All right. So let's move to the second tool for this. Use declarative language when you talk to your kids. You basically uh, verbalize your thought process. So mummies and maybe daddies and future mummies, I'm actually going to suggest to you, you can talk a little bit to your children. So, what is declarative language, okay? So, oftentimes, when we talk to children, um, kita selalunya, we're the dominant one, right? And then the children is the subordinate, okay? So, when we tell the children something, kita bagi down directions. So, we usually tell them directive language, right? The language is used to, like, okay, do your homework, go to sleep, be quiet, right? You're telling them what to do. But declarative language is you de Declare, you make declarations what you notice, right? So you're saying something out loud. You're just th saying what you're thinking. Macam orang tak betul sikit. <laughs> Basically, right? Oh, homework tak siap lagi. Mesti cakap seorang-seorang lah. Ha, dah pukul sembilan. Oh, semua orang tak tidur lagi. Oh, everyone's being very quiet right now. Eh, kakak punya pinggan masih atas meja. Yes, you're talking to yourself, parents. So the best thing is, when you talk to yourself that you voice out your observations, it helps the children think for themselves because they're so used to being told what to do, do this, do that, do this, do that. They also want to have some freedom and some control, okay? You know, time that they wake up, time mandi, time makan, nak makan apa, nak pergi sekolah, sekolah pun dalam kelas kena buat apa, everything they're told what to do. So the fact that you give them some kind of control by not telling them what to do, they are uh, more willing to do it, number satu. And the other thing is, they can think, okay, pinga atai meja. Maknanya, oh yeah, I forgot to pick up the pinga atai meja. I will pick up and put it in the sink, right? So, 
This will help the children learn apa yang they're going to observe and what they should do rather than just rely on the adults to tell them what to do, right? So one thing I noticed with um, my students, because the learning center, I have international uh, students from international school and local school, is that this, uh, the mentality of students that we, we dah biasa cakap tu, this is the right answer, follow this answer, right? Don't ask why, don't ask when, don't ask what. Just buat tu. So what I noticed, okay, the answer is not correct. And they'll be ready, okay, what's the right answer? Tell me what's the right answer. They're so used to people telling them what to do, right? But I'll be like, no, what do you think is the right answer, right? What do you think? So you're helping them think critically of what they should do, what they should pay attention to. If I do this, this might happen. So in a way, yes, you're talking out loud, right? What I do to my uh, kid tadi? Ah, don't lupa tadi don't lupa mandi. Right, and I'm like, oh, yo, banyaknya baju atas lantai ni. Tak buku dalam washing machine. I'm like, oh, mama, sorry, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> it obviously, it takes a lot of practice, right? So, um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, in, in the time where it depends on the children. But oftentimes, this has been shown by research that they are more willing to do it because they're not being told what to do. You give them a bit of um, control. Yeah, a bit of control. So, yes. So basically, yes, those are the three tools and three um, rules that I mean that you guys can, I hope, inshallah, will be useful for you guys, right? And we want to uh, try to do this and use these rules because we want to empower the children. Kan? We want them to grow up to be obviously confident and doing the right thing most of the time and willing and happy to do the right things, right? So, of course, we have so much hopes and aspirations for our children, kita nak, you know, them to be happy and be successful when they grow up. Tapi don't let that, pressure that you have, you want so much for your children because you want for the best for them. Tapi you cannot affect the relationship you have with them. Okay? So, inshallah, you know, after this, please think about um, the values that you want them to have, right? Macam mana you can use these tools to start communicating what you believe in your values that you want your child to do today. Inshallah. And thank you for your attention, everybody. Um, I uh, am open to questions. Wow, <laughs> it's very yeah. uh, alhamdulillah very short, tapi macam mm. padat. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, sorry if I if I went too fast for certain parts, but I hope it's helpful. Um, if you need more examples, I'm happy. I'm happy to give some more examples. Okay. Uh, audience macam mana ada yang point yang kurang faham? Cuma I macam uh, confused tadi pasal perkataan uh, notice it when you notice it oh sorry uh, like? noticing when you are noticing it apa tu um um i i, ah. I faham lah maksudnya bila dia buat baik dia notice dia kan macam yes. mana dia buat yang tak... when you notice it at the same time tak boleh kata oh semalam tu you buat something tu uh, kurang sikit dia punya effect oh, so when they do something good immediately you bagi puji you How bagi the praise about their environment, what do you mean by that? Ah, uh, what you notice around them, kan? So let's say like um oh um like using uh combine balik dengan declarative language, ah uh, like oh bilik ni sepah sangat lah, you know susah mama nak jalan, right? So they're noticing about the environment, yeah. Be like okay. yeah, okay. about themselves and an environment, so they feel that they can control themselves and also they can affect. The surrounding sekali. I hope I hope that that, that, yeah. that answers your question. Ah yeah yeah, alhamdulillah betul betul. Okay faham. Ah <laughs> <laughs> sebab bila combine dengan deklaratif tadi, okay baru uh, yeah clear lah. So ah yeah. uh, audience ada yang nak tanya sebarang soalan. Ha, ni ni apa ni julung julung bukan julung julung kali. Bukan senang kita nak dapat ah uh, speaker Puan Ilham Anwar untuk berada yeah. bersama kita <laughs> pada malam ini. <laughs> So, uh, any macam, apa panggil, uh, nayamu ke kan, apa ni orang panggil, apa ni nayamu, I panggil, uh, apa ni, apa ni, 
Tayamu tu. Kerisauan. Kerisa, kerisauan. Ah, ke kebingungan. Okey, kerisauan eh. Okey lah, kerisauan ke ataupun ada benda yang macam sebab uh, some of the parents juga yang kat sini yang dengar ni uh, mungkin uh, dia dia oh uh, dia uh, dilema apa tu dilema sebab yang some of the parents juga ialah parents yang most of them saya rasa most of them uh, peni housewife yang uh, 24/7 dengan dengan kids kan especially kids yang kecil lah uh. <laughs> okay, I have the same question to this one question from Fiza. Macam mana nak handle anak nak stop bercakap dan bertanya ketika um, ketika kita sedang stres lah, kita sedang penat. Oh, this is ah uh, so uh, saya punya masalah juga. Kan kita baru balik kerja, anak tu time pula semua benda nak bercakap. Oh, yeah, especially anak tu yang betul suka express kan. Ah, uh, selalu uh, mak, 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 untuk parents yang kerja ni ah uh, orang jumpa lepas balik kerja kan. So semua yeah, jumpa so semua lah. Luah kan. <laughs> Bombard semua tumpah everything. Ha, Awal-awal baru balik kerja, baru lepas tadi macam Haa, ah, benda lah tadi ke pun macam tu kan. How, how do we can do that? So, a very good it. question, definitely. Uh, you know, at the same time, if you want to tell them, you know, please stop talking, you know, it's not, you don't want to discourage that kind because they are open to talking. Tapi memang kalau you dah max out and you cannot take anything else, Uh, you tak nak also lash out to your child juga um, You try to be as, as honest as possible um, Well, cakap like You know what, mama's having a really tiring day Mama betul-betul letih sangat Mama nak dengar Tapi boleh tak bagi mama 2 minit And you put on the timer Right Put on the timer so they can see Okay, two more minutes left That I can tell mama Right, that that will actually also help them And give them some self-control Be like, okay, mama needs some time Um This is yeah. Oh wait, so that's from Fiza. Okay, Kari, Kari pun ada soalan. So uh, mm. you can try that. Um, I, I, I actually just tell my kids sometimes that much. I'm like, Mama needs a timeout. <laughs> so I actually I give myself a timeout. Uh, it's kalau boleh jangan, because you want to be present for the children. Tapi memang I faham. Memang sometimes you max out too. Uh. They don't tahu lah, okay, mama time out sekejap. But I, insyaAllah, I try to not be long for too long. Um, we give a few minutes. And uh, um, how, how, decide, how you decide which one to talk first? <laughs> That is my problem. Oh, what do you mean which one to talk first? We have like three. <laughs> so everyone. Oh, like three turn. <laughs> so, two, two, boleh buat, boleh buat, boleh buat macam, tak tahu lah, boleh buat. Um, yang mana cop dulu kot. <laughs> Idea, idea sebab kita pun yeah. hari-hari Could be, kita uh, ada, ada oh, idea Ataupun dia take turns, right? So you can do 1, 2, 3, the next day is 2, 3, 1 And then the next day is 3, 1, 2 They take turns Hari ni kakak start dulu Hari esok, abang Hari uh, the next the day after that, adik pula Nampaknya dalam kereta pun kena tambah chart lah eh. okay. Hari ni hari yeah. Senin, turn kakak eh Hari yeah. ni hari rasa, turn nombor dua eh Hari ni Rabu, turn ah, nombor sebab tiga Memang ada orang ngeruran, no kakak, it's my turn, I'm talking Ya, ah, dia lah, yes um, Because uh, uh, what I do, my family juga dalam kereta We can listen to music, so we take turns Okay, for first kakak punya choice Lepas tu, uh, apa, nombor dua punya choice Macam tu lah, bagi take turns Memang you are sure you have to be fair Ya yeah. Ah uh, sorry Kari said if kita dah didik anak elok rumah ah uh, 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 ni soalan daripada hmm. Kari yes if kita uh, if kalau kita dah ialah kat suruh rumah kita dah bagi dia macam proper okey depan ni ni okey tak boleh ni 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 tapi bila pas dia masuk kindergarten dia ada apa ni ialah dia dapat apa ni benda-benda yang tak elok daripada kawan-kawan macam mana nak encounter situation macam tu macam dia start mungkin dia start hmm. Rampas barang yes. ke, mungkin dia start macam lah. So, I think well, the situation is some kids, they like to compare, kan? Um, you know, kalau marah, oh, apa, say, kawan I boleh boleh je panjat time meja, right? Um, with this kind of value. So, that's why actually going back to your goals and going back to the values you think as a family, you can believe that's the value for the family. So, it's good juga to sit and talk to your kids juga. Okay, that's okay, that's, you know, Siapa-siapa punya family tu, they can stay on the table. Um, they grab from the sister. But in our family, we don't do that. That's our family. So you kena keep 
track and apa basically be um, to cut this is special to you guys okay family right because yeah. later on maybe in the future you know they're like okay kenapa um, you know my friend had a phone bila pada tahun i'm already eight years old cannot have a phone i said well that's that's personal your parents you know bagi sudah tapi kita as a family you know we don't need a phone at this age right so to show where like macam family don't family dorang family kita we have our own belief we have our own rules that you set so kita kena keep reminding lah walaupun memang bila once kita open anak kita kepada dunia yeah. lah, kita akan timbul macam-macam yalah itu kurasi tak lebih kan kena ada banyak lagi memang never end it so because um on reminding anak-anak tentang yes go back to your values that they cannot argue lah because it's the values of your family So macam for example um well kids at masa dia kecil I can't remember exactly at which age, which age but as at a certain age that they instead of getting approval from their parents they want to get approval from friends right so when that happens you know that's when definitely start comparing like oh you dia ada telefon dia boleh minum soda kat rumah ke apa ke so you yeah, you go back to what you believe as a family so Um, memang dia akan belajar something that's not nice tapi you can reinforce balik and give the positive positive um, reinforcement give the positive comments to them when they they don't do the nakal-nakal things from they learn from school yeah okay, okay next um, question Nadia macam mana nak um, stop Suriana uh, uh, nak stop comment bila kids doing something incorrectly because sometimes when we comment everything they think we don't trust them yes That's very good. Um, a few things I would say. A very good question. Is that one is we can let them learn <laughs> their lesson. Um, you can you can actually um try to tell them in the positive light. So, uh, my kid, for example, time to didn't what put didn't what something yang ah uh, didn't tolong potong sayur, right? And instead of saying don't cut yourself, be like. Well, how do I look? How how does that look like? That don't cut myself, right? Be like, please be careful, please be careful, and give them um comments that they should what they should do correctly, right? So this is one where you have to tell them what to do right instead of telling them don't hurt yourself, don't fall, right? So um, if you can give me a bit more uh specific uh specification of what exactly would look like, I'm gonna think about um. I say that nice swing, right? Maybe you can guide them first, and I don't know. I can I cannot visualize what uh, what can exactly something that isn't correct. Okay, yang yang simple lah. Kalau I think mungkin mm-hmm. macam tulis huruf 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 kan? Kita mm-hmm. macam kalah ni balik balik. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sal. That's a much simple example. So I have to think like why yeah, the couple can. Okay. Ah uh, yes. Ah uh, so that's a really good example when you want to write the letter F. Right, you don't um, in, uh, you don't uh, uh, try to stop them from writing because they don't have the effort to tulis, right? And please note, kalau tulis F terbalik and things like that, it's definitely okay for kids to do it till six age or six or seven because that's still the age of them then trying to uh, figure out uh, visual spatial, right? So especially my daughter, um, Rafa, she's left-handed. They tulis everything mirror image, terbalik. W R A F A H dia tulis kat dah sini R A F A H sekali right but i'm not worried because i know she's left handed and she's only five years old she's learning right so okay sorry going back to the f um it's like you write oh wow that's the letter f let me try and then you draw the correct f right so after what they uh, after what when they have more self aware so this is how you write f then they will eventually follow So my uh, my worry I was a bit worried because people like oh maybe anak you this dyslexic lah tulis terbalik. So I macam agak terasa sikit sebab cakap pasal anak I tapi at the same time I know you know developmentally um, you know five years old it shouldn't be alarmed. So alhamdulillah after a few um, months kat sekolah she can write her name from left to right. Right. At the same time maybe dia belajar mengaji kan kan mengaji kan you baca from right to left. So <laughs> ada banyak factors yang boleh affect to it. Um, actually actually I think um parents ikilah uh, kita sebab semua Malaysian kan so Malaysian mm-hmm. parents ni kita ada kita, uh, saya lah rasa kita ada issue untuk trust the process kita rasa that must be corrected immediately 
nak understand betul kan aku boleh tulis betul ni nanti ah macam yeah. itulah so nak trust understand yeah. memang something yang new to uh, to young parents macam kami semua ni lah so, kita tak nampak lagi kesan dia melainkan <laughs> orang tu dah ada anak ramai so dia tak tahu oh ni hari tu sama je macam aku yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yes, exactly. Sama. Very, very good point. Especially young parents, eh, right? You should be worried, lah, yeah, lah. Being new mom, of course, huh? so is it? This is normal, it's not normal. Ah, uh, very understandable. Um, but uh, again, going back, it's the process, right? Um, if your child is, you know, daripada dulu cannot do something very basic, the process is even though progress is sikit je, it's still progress, right? It shows that they're still improving. So, I would say that. You know, if you are feeling anxious and nervous, so you don't want to give that stress or anxiety to the children. So take a break, pause, and okay, this is the process. Yeah, I mean, I know I, it's easy for me to say because I find it I don't want to do number two also. So maybe I don't most have to worry. Sikit, tapi alhamdulillah, from what I learned from work, based on age developmental for each kid, that is completely normal, and you shouldn't worry. Because I've had parents that the anak I dah umur lima tahun tak boleh baca. I kata anak I nak masuk sana one tak boleh baca sebab I hantar tadi ka yang tak ajak ABC tak apa <laughs> sebab memang your the human brain does not need to learn to read till age seven so so things like that if I did not learn that I would have been worried so we understand parents want the best for the kids right so um you know unless if the developmental too is betul betul very concerning right uh, maybe you know like finger motor fingers those are really important because these are more uh, usable for later if it's really really behind then yes please consult a doctor or someone uh, an expert to think if it's a normal developmental process right um sorry okay next question uh yeah, question. from azmira azmira huh? oh yeah, there are two questions Thank you, it's thank so you. so helpful. Thank you so much for the two two questions. One is my three year old has the tendency to selectively ignore me or that when we call him usually to uh. get to something. Memang dia buat peka aja. Ni anak first okay. kot eh kot. Uh-huh. Uh, and then the three year old nombor dua soalan nombor dua three year old tu suka menyampuk when that and I are talking. Baru nak cakap dia pun terus menyampuk but has nothing to say really. Yeah. Hmm. Oh three year olds. Oh yes. Ah, uh, very good question. Thank you, Azmira. Um, so the first one is, yes, kids are very very smart, and they know that if they're being told what to do, they better not do it. <laughs> what extra could do? So what this is where when you when they actually tell up you finally, um, right? Uh, one thing yeah. So one thing I can think about is that when they finally job, you're like, oh, you answered me, you know, like ah, like. I feel so happy, right? You show and you give them the excitement. Be like, yes, you're supposed to answer me. That is after the 27 times you answer me, I'm still happy. Right? Kena berlakon lah, berlakon. Ah, berlakon sikit lah. Saya ada sikit kita selalu berlakon. Um, and the other thing is that, and I lost my chain of thought. So one thing is um, show uh, very, very expressive and uh, happy. And when they actually answer you, be like, oh, you are very kind. And you answer... Um, you're, you're being uh, you're helpful. Okay, so that's a declarative language, and the other one is also a declarative language. And say how you feel. Oh, tala. Um, let me say sorry. I be called anak you three or like oh, you know, kakak tak jawab mama. I feel so sad. I really need help. Yeah, ni pun also lah juga yang ni. But you are declaring how you feel. You can also declare your feelings. Juga. I'm very very sad. You know, about si. I'm not being hurt. Someone's not helping me. I feel so sad, right? And then with three year olds, man, the more animated you are, like you don't suka. Be like, oh, mama sedih ke? Um, so maybe if you try a few times, inshallah, you know, they'll be they'll be more um apa pucker to it, right? They will will pick it up, right? Because at the same time, they 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 have a soft spot for for parents most of the time. And they don't want to hurt the parents' feelings most of the time. Most of the time, <laughs> so try those two for the first question. Is that really highlight and be super happy when they actually jaw up? And secondly, you can express your feelings, right? Um, three years suka menyampuk when Dad and I are talking. Baru juga dah cakap terus nak menyampuk. Say really, all right. The this also sounds like um. Nak apa? They maybe nak something attention juga. They tahu kalau parents are talking, they're not giving attention to me. 
Um, one thing is that um, you can explain to them, it is a long-winded way to do it, but explain that, oh, you know, uh, kakak, I, I know you want to say something really, really best. Ah, Mama nak dengar sangat, tapi asal Mama nak cakap something important dengan Baba. Okay? Can you wait one minute or two minutes before you share something? Right? So, when they actually um, apa, wait, you know, it's like, like tunggu sekejap, you, but then again, you highlight, okay, wow, you wait one minute. That's amazing. You might get attention to that. Because maybe for them, they like, so you start talking like, okay, like, can you like, you know, please keep quiet. Please go quiet when we're talking. So you're asking them to be quiet, to be quiet. So when you highlight that they actually waited, they actually um, uh, deny instructions. Um, and yeah, it will, it will, it will definitely, it will definitely help. Inshallah. I hope that that answers. Uh, so it gives you some ideas uh, with that suggestion. Tapi sel selalu kalau, in my case, I think, uh, kalau yang seminit-seminit ni, boleh dia buat. Tapi bila kita nak borak, tak boleh. So, kesimpulan saya, kita tak boleh borak lah bila dia buat ni. Tak juga tu. So, yeah, I would try to be like, maybe start with seconds, you know. Start with five seconds. Ataupun, um, start, uh, start small, small dulu. Because for kids, one minute quiet is a very long time for them. Very, very long time for them. <laughs> so even some adults got kind. So I, I know I still talk up, I still berbora. So one minute to be quiet, we're like, hmm, ada benda dah cerita ni. So uh, we know it's a big deal for them. So if you you give micro, micro, uh, not micro, sorry, mini, mini uh, time slots, try to see if that works for them. Okay. okay. Yeah. Kita go to the next question. Yeah. Uh, from Nadia, macam mana nak build up confident level anak? Sebab dekat sekolah, sensi cakapnya hmm. hongkok, tapi di rumah campur dan dia agak kurang confident jika di sekolah. Hmm, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, this is definitely a really, really good question about you know kids yang duduk in a foreign country dengan different multiple languages. Um, apa? I definitely understand with this one. Ah, uh, I actually got a really good suggestion from ah uh, cikgu sekolah my daughter. Um, apa? Uh, I send them to a bilingual school sebab masa datang kat Malaysia baru datang last year. Eh, bahasa kat Malaysia. Dari Malaysia ke Jepun. Ah, yes. <laughs> so, tapi just so you know, my Japanese is zero. Eh? <laughs> so, baru datang tu, um, apa, obviously, I nak encourage dia boleh cakap Japanese. And dia, dia boleh faham, tapi dia, dia tak nak cakap, right? So, the teacher actually gave a really good suggestion. Dia cakap, um, pick a specific time during the day to speak only in Japanese. Right, fully in Japanese. So, uh, uh, my family, kita pick the time, masa makan, time makan. Not the whole dinner, tapi maybe just for five minutes, kita even set a timer. Only Nihongo, right? So, obviously, I tak, tak, I tak faham apa-apa. So, I boleh tolong uh, contribute dengan cakap bahasa Melayu je. <laughs> Not fully bahasa Melayu. Um, so, my husband, sorry, to disclose it for me, my husband is Japanese. Okay, yeah. So, um, antara my husband dengan my daughter, cakap. And then, um, because if they still tak confident, check out the same phrase, right? You know, again, kideska, right? And then they can hi, again, kideska. So you build not only that confidence, but the um, repetition is key when learning a new language sometimes. So, you know, you can also use, um, uh, apa? like, how was school today? A new phrase you nak belajar. How was school today? How was the weather today? The same question, the same structure, and then boleh jawab balik. So um, that one can help them in terms of uh, for being, getting used to it and then also practice at home. I, with this, I'm assuming you can also speak Japanese, uh, Nadia. I, I'm assuming oh. you can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you can speak at Ramadan. Soalan ni ni memang macam, every, every question macam, kenapa berkait dengan I? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, but uh, just uh, untuk Nadia and uh, this uh, audience lah kot, kalau kita macam, uh, ni just tambahan macam kita nak bercakap, macam kita nak buat sebab untuk bercakap dengan anak dalam bahasa ni, dalam ni Hongkok, make sure kita kena juga kena form yang sama macam kawan dia cakap ataupun sensei dia cakap. Sebab hmm. Japanese language ni dia ada banyak, dia ada banyak form-form dia kan. Jadi uh, yang hmm. saya pesan anak saya juga, saya cakap juga kat, kat rumah sikit-sikit. Tapi, Uh, macam uh, Amiga Futikimas Itu sensei dia cakap Adik apa ni Kawan dia cakap Amiga Futikiru yo <laughs> Oh yang ni sebab apa The accent Bukan accent Bukan the accent Dia eh. punya Tak tak Dia punya past tense Present tense Lepas tu dia ada macam Kasi oh. kanak Itu ada macam Beberapa jenis lah So macam Kat rumah kita cakap pula Amiga Futikita yo So kenapa tadi kita Kawan dia guru 
Cik Kudia kimas tak? Ah, untuk so kita best tak? Kita boleh Kita jumpa tu atas show sikit Untuk Tapi, be, untuk be, practicing uh, at home will help yeah, lah yeah, ha. Ha. Sebab tak realistic juga kalau kita cakap the whole day Japanese kan yeah, So memang. start with small amount um, As with many things, add, progress Add on lah, add on just for audience okay, Macam oh kena gap figure out apa yang sensei guna form ni kat sense Kalau yeah. tu kita kat rumah So what's actually what? No ni hango <laughs> So, okay. I tak, tak, tak boleh contribute in that sense. Yeah. Okay. Kata tadi, dia minta 5 minit senyap. Tapi, bagi saya lima minit saat. Okay, Fiza, boleh start dengan 5 saat? Jadi, saya akan cakap, start dengan 5 saat dulu. Yes. Baru masa 5 minit. So, 5 minit lama sangat. Yeah, so, I nak tanya juga apa. That 5 minit tu, is it a timer or not? Because kids, depending yeah. on their age level, memang visualize time ni memang off. Sangat off. They don't know. Like, that's what I said before. Like, one minute tu memang lama sangat for them sometimes, right? So, so we have to let them know what. Ada? Bawa timer ke apa macam mana? Ah, timer selalunya lah. Um, the timer and it's bet- better to have timer um yang ada gambar clock. Let me try to see ada tak kat my phone. You go timer oh, guna, and guna guna telefon lah maksudnya. Yeah. Yang ada click click. Uh, click I think click. iPhone tak ada. Yeah, so let's say oh, Okay, okay, okay. I start. So the timer was helpful if uh, for kids they're very visual. So mm-hmm. they can see this mm-hmm. thing going on. So they only nampak because sometimes numbers they don't make sense to them. Yes. So when the visual this part here they nampak then they feel okay. Like sikit lagi sikit lagi you know like it's moving it's moving. Right? So that's that's helpful for for the kids. Um there's a word called promodoro I I don't know if I'm, I'm pronounce it correctly but I think um I think uh for android they are the the jump shape. The shape of the jump and the timer moving. So that helps as well for the visualization for kids. Yeah. So they have to visualize juga. And also 5 minutes macam agak lama. So start with small like maybe 1 minute dulu 30 seconds and and progress it for higher and higher. Yeah. Um oh speaking of timer actually. Um this is a bit uh but not really related to the question tapi it's uh in general is that if we prepare the student eh, the student sorry just lepas if we prepare the child from uh, moving from activity to activity. So let's say don't tengah busy main main apa uh, toys okay tengah busy busy main and then tapi time nak mandi so you tell them beforehand okay kids 10 more minutes mandi right and you put a timer um and then before that and then after 5 minutes okay kids 5 more minutes mandi so you have to prepare them mentally because for kids to switch daripada main dengan tengah best dia kena mandi memang uh, masalah lah kan saya tak mau kena gaduh so you prepare them, okay, understand, five more minutes, kena mandi. So when they kata salin kena mandi, they already know it's coming. Yeah, that usually helps uh, with my kids juga to prepare them. Okay, Um. so that was uh, from Fiza, from Razdan. Okay, Kalau yang ni tadi ayah. yang tu soalan lebih kurang kan pasal bercakap. Tadi dah kita dah bincangkan. And then um from Anna, how do you instill the feeling of Iza as Muslim for the young kids in this foreign surrounding when their friends are non-Muslim and trying to adapt with friends or school? Okay, Anna, that's a very good question. So wait, Razdan. Oh, okay, okay. That, that was the question that we talked about. So okay. So for instilling Islam. This is definitely uh, very, very common among Muslim kids in a uh, non-Muslim majority country is that they have their identity, right? Because the friends are doing all these things, especially in a Western country, they want to like all this party and all these things, that's how they blend in. So I would say that for, for this situation is that um, you build the, the core values of the family, right? And if one of the core values of the family is that you know you uphold the teaching of Islam, you have to may uh, uh, have that root of that because they obviously they will they will compare juga you know why does this family boleh makan sup ayam ke apa apa nama tu noodle noodle ah uh, buat noodle noodle kan ya Allah yang dia guna ramen ramen ah, ramen ramen yang tadi lagi ramen right you know, I did not know. Okay, I makan ramen kat Malaysia. I did not know kat Jepang ramen is halal. Okay. Alhamdulillah, ada, ada halal ramen kat Osaka. I was happy to, to find that. So anyway, yes. So ramen, I, I had to find out later that it's actually pork, pork broth. Like why? Why can... And then also you meet, actually, when I was in America, I meet some Muslims. 
yang dia bukan Zabiha, dia makan ayam KFC ke apa dia kata, ya yeah, I mean a country who is um who apa uh, restrict untuk cari daging halal. So I I makan ni, okay? So that's that's where it, the comparison comes back. But you cakap balik the core values of the family is that because you know we have to uphold these values as a family. Gonna you know solat lima kali sehari, puasa ramadan ramadan. Where like yes, you can still hang out with your friends, but do not forget these core values as a family. Um, so this is where when the kids are older, it's good to talk about the values and um, the goals you have with them and uh, also with your spouse. Yeah, because um, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, um, while we're answering, maybe uh, you you want to tell me your how how you. But um, your even your CV shows that you have been going to few countries. Uh, untuk you punya study and so on, kan? So how? Yeah. You... So uh, for me juga okay. Number one, uh, I pergi masa I dah 18 years old. Jelah <laughs> so masa oh okay okay okay. Ah, uh, 18 dah 18 years kat Malaysia tu, you know, belajar hmm. uh, all the Islamic values semua kat Malaysia. Tapi what I know is actually one thing. I ah. Uh, uh, it's sad, but I had a ramai juga friends yang pergi US, UK, Australia because they are the freedom. There are no no other people, no Muslims are gonna judge you, right? So yelah muka Melayu tahu muka Melayu macam kalau pergi minum ke apa ke. So they tend to be a bit more free when they go to these Western countries, which is very sad. So for me, I think because for me, I probably I mean kalau I I did apa you know, like in my mind, I speak about it, like two, two, and I speak about it. If I woke up to do, nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna really like care, right? That's to do. But at the same time, I think, like, but what at what cost? This is just my opinion, my 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 uh, experience. Okay, at what cost that I, like, not give up? Uh, you know, at this, give up what I have been practicing all my life, where I pakai tudung, I solat, things like that. At what point, right? You know, like, um, also, um, I think about my kawan kawan, semua boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend. Like, what, but what does it say about my self value if I just suddenly not much like, hoo ha again the opposite gender and things like that, right? Like, nobody's gonna know. And some people will be like, oh, you know, if they have a dilemma, uh, Allah nampak ke tak, but for my self worth as well. So, I gabungkan my self worth, um, uh, what, what Islam aja I as well, like that, because. You know, it is hard because, you know, you're not surrounded by the community to support you. Um, I have to also thank, you know, Alhamdulillah, my root and my core teachings of Islam as a, as a child. Um, but at the same time, juga tu, um, it's also what I believe. I, I uh, combine together with what I believe and Islam. I don't know if that really <laughs> makes sense. Tapi at the same time, I... I don't know if I'm in a position um, to really say as a small child, you know, your developmental stage is a bit different, right? And your friends are different at that age. Because when I began as 18, I didn't make friends back in Malaysia as in my high school dulu. So coming to US, I just want to make more friends and things like that. You know, if I don't make friends in the US, it's okay because I have my friends back in Malaysia. So I, I don't know if uh, my experience is exactly the same with the kids who are studying in Japan, like Chitlegi, things like that. Yeah. Thanks, Allah. Thank you. Thank you for that spotlight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I hope it, uh, all the answers are helpful as well oh, for everyone else. Term to yeah. core value of our family. So everything starts from family, actually. Yeah, yes. I mean, parents definitely have to... Um, uh, set a good example to the kids and also really, really express um, and share with them to be on the same page. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes kids, based on what they were exposed to, might mean what believe they believe in terms of what's important. Obviously, it's not the same as parents sometimes. So we have to try to be on the same page in that sense. Well, uh, most of them, um, many people check up, monkey, monkey see, monkey do. Tapi, uh, <laughs> yang kita, kita jumpa kadang, Eh, kenapa mak dapat dia macam ni je tapi anak dia tak pun ha and so I believe uh, macam uh, the point of your talk today is about communication. 
kita Melayu hmm. tak adalah kan mesti asyik-asyik Melayu je sebab semua Melayu kan. Eh kita Melayu mungkin kurang communication, kita kurang um, macam tadi vision, vision anak kita pun hmm. kita tak ada orang anak kita, kita je yang sendiri rasa macam ah uh, nanti aku jadi doktor eh. Okey dia jadi doktor, okey yang ni jadi ni, okey. Ini mesti menjadi berguna kepada umat semua. Tapi hmm. dia sendiri kita tak ada cakap pun kat dia. Apa yang orang nak cakap, hmm. yang dia nak jadi. Ya. Yeah. Apa pandangan dia tentang pendapat kita untuk jadikan dia macam um, nak dia macam ni kan. So communication is actually the main uh, the main apa ni panggil apa? Main lah benda dalam family kan untuk even kita ada core value benda gila pun tapi kalau kita bilang seorang kita tak communicate dengan anak kita, kita tak huh? kita tak Ah, yalah. Dengan pegangan kita mengisi bangki dua je. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, no, and so also, that's a really good point, Saf. Thank you. Memang good point. Memang apa yang kita nak memang ialah mungkin rasa tidak they don't want. But we can, with communication, they can understand what they, what, what, what we think is important. Kenapa you kerja jadi doktor yang besar? Right? Because, you know, this profession can help financially and also help people. You kena communicate to them uh, kenapa you rasa all these things and all these goals. Yeah. Um, thank you everyone for your questions. Uh, I also, if you have time, I don't know if we, we have enough time or not, the questions that were sent before. I, oh, uh, uh, I think it's 10.30. Mungkin ada soalan lain uh, yang ada dihantar masa Google, uh, kat Google, uh, dalam Google Form tu. Kan, uh, mungkin uh, boleh, macam mana? Uh, mungkin Ilham boleh try jawab recent email ke? True email? Is it okay? Okay. Yeah, definitely that's fine. Aduh, aduh budak. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, uh, mama, so, mama dah ada the time limit uh, lah. Lah. <laughs> Lama sangat tak maaf <laughs> Okay so uh, Untuk audience Thank you for joining us I hope you can spend some time To fill in a uh, form ni feedback Kita ada bagi dekat chat okay. Kita bagi 30 second untuk audience uh, Isi form And you can also follow us uh, Iman Iman Jepun Or uh, nama lain Ika Muda Antara Bangsa Jepun di kita punya Facebook page uh, dekat, uh, Yang share screen ya. Kita ada juga Iman Jepun Podcast Kita ada Tomolachi Iman Jepun um, And then kita ada Instagram and so on lah So boleh tengok dekat uh, Share screen and minta tolong isi Feedback lah untuk kita improve uh, Sensei Nikiko untuk masa akan datang insyaAllah So I give 30 seconds Before uh, Ilham Bagi last word <coughs> Untuk sesi ni Thank you Terima kasih Okay, um, so um, sebelum kita akhiri majlis, kita nak minta uh, Ilham share sikit uh, or wrap up your final words uh, for kita tutup start. Okay, um, so first is Akak, thank you so much everybody for coming and for staying this whole time. Memang macam rasa terharu, macam you nak listen to me, whatever I need to share, Alhamdulillah. Um, and But also parents, know that you are trying your best mommies especially you are doing an amazing job some of you are studying and working at the same time i remember salute know that you are trying your best as possible give yourself a break right give, celebrate for yourself you guys give treat yourself alhamdulillah you are doing an amazing job your kids look up to you kids love you no matter what Thank you everybody. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you semua yang datang dan hadir dan thank you juga kepada Ilham. InsyaAllah kita tutup majlis kita dengan atas Bikifara dan Surawan Ansar.